welcome back friends welcome to another part of uh, understanding sexual reproduction in flowering plant in the last lecture we talked about the pre fertilization event and especially we talked about the morphology of stamen that is the male reproductive part of a flower and we also see how exactly they produce the male gamete which is uh, the spore the microspore converted to pollen grains now we will talk about the morphology of pistil which is the part of female reproductive uh, part of a flower so let's now look at the pistil so what is pistil in the first place now the female part of the flower looks something like this let me let me draw here it looks like it has a receiver and this and then at the end it has this structure like this so this is known as stigma stigma and this is known as style and this is the ovary stigma style and ovary stigma is the receiver of the male gamete okay so pollen grains drop into the stigma and then pollen grains start germinating form the germ pollen tube through the style and then finally it reaches the ovary now most of the event of fertilization which is known as double fertilization in case of plants will take place inside the ovary so to understand the process of fertilization well we need to know the morphology of this ovary a little bit you know in the uh, in class 11 that we already talked about this chapter in details regarding the structure of ovary and how it looks like but in this video i'll just say a little part of the ovarian structure which is required to understand the double fertilization only so if you look at the structure of ovary the best way to look the structure is make a cross section of the ovary and once you make the cross section what we get inside the ovary are known as different sac like structures known as ovule okay ovule is also known as megasporangium remember this megasporangium it's also known as this ovule so it's like sac like structures inside the ovary okay and if i draw this structure not a complete drawing an arbitrary drawing of this structure it, it looks something like this so inside somewhere it looks like something like this okay now if i draw it here it will be something like let's say like this and like this and some part now if you look at this structure i'm not going to tell all the components of this structure in details here but what i can say here is this structure looks something like a stalk connecting to the center of it and it's the position of which is inverse you see the position is inverse actually in this picture it was not shown in this side but actually the position is somewhat inverse so that the opening of the place where because you know in all this female structure in all the structure of the megasporangium or ovule there will be only one cell which is required for double fertilization actually the primary fertilization event that is the egg because we know for any kind of fertilization we need egg to fuse with the sperm and egg to fuse with the male gamete so egg is the female gamete egg will be produced here in this side so its position of egg is to the bottom most portion of this ovary but sperm and actually the 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 spores or pollen grains will land to the stigma on top so pollen grain needs to make its journey throughout this style and go backwards something like this to contact with the egg that's the idea so it's present in inverse direction now let's imagine one simple thing there are two portions that i'll mention two poles one is the closed another one is the open okay so they have two separate names for it okay for example this open pole is known as micro pi and the closed pole is known as chalazal pole these are the two sections now what happens here once this ovary is present and you know the megasporangium is in place 
सो मेगास्पोरेंजियम दे कंटेन मेगास्पोरेंजियम मदर सेल्स ओके जस्ट लाइक इन केस ऑफ द प्लांट the development of the male part of the plant we saw that the development of microsporangium and there is also pre progenitor cells a mother cells that give rise to microspores similarly the megasporangium mother cells are also present in this tissue that megasporangium mother cell also known as here mmm megasporangium mother mmc megasporangium mother cell meiosis of megasporangium mother cell meiosis cell division will turn the megasporangium mother cell who has 2n number of chromosome into n number of chromosome containing gametes known as what megaspore and megasporangium mother cell produce this megaspores they are nothing but here the megaspores that are produced n number of chromosome containing cell okay so that n number of chromosome containing cell is this one so we have a giant cell right and this megaspores that they produce they normally produce four such megaspores after this division because you know megasporangium mother cells two such division it creates four such megaspores and this four megaspores three of them are destroyed and one of them is kept for forming egg three of them are destroyed so the one that survives is this one the one that we are looking at a large giant cell they have one nucleus in it so one nucleus is present with n number of chromosomes and a large cytosolic content and we know whenever the cytosol content is higher than the nucleus then the cell needs to divide to balance it up so here what happens this particular cell the large cell with one nucleus the nucleus start dividing and replicating itself the nucleus start replicating itself without creating the cell wall separation because this division is really really fast so the replication of chromosome take place and sooner from one nucleus it becomes two mitotic division from two nucleus four from four to eight so total eight nuclear division take place here without the process of cytokinesis what is cytokinesis the separation of cytosol by cell wall so here nucleus start dividing so now let's look at here the nucleus start dividing so let me draw all this different nucleus in here with this red color dot so one nucleus become two and then two to four four to six and ultimately eight so when they produce eight nucleus then the nucleus start to separate and arrange based on their polarity so three of such nucleus migrate towards the chalazal pole and they remain there by forming the cell wall and septum so three separate cell formed during chalazal pole okay now two such three three other nucleus are also separated near the micropyle one of the nucleus is surrounded by again a cell wall here in this part okay and this is the chalazal in the micropyle pole also three nucleus originate so you see three to the chalazal pole three to the micropyle and two nucleus remain in the center surrounded by lot of cytosolic component so this is the end structure here okay this end structure is very important now because the cell that you will find the, the all the cells that arrange to this chalazal pole are known as antipodal cells known as antipodal cells these antipodal cells remain there and actually they don't have much function during the double fertilization on the other hand the two other cells that are present near micropyle are known as synergids but that one cell that is in contact to the synergid is turned into egg that turned into egg cell or the female gamete apart from that 
this two nucleus that is present surrounded by the large cytosol in the middle are known as the polar cells. So that's how you see the whole distribution of cells, total eight cells distribution. So at the end of this process, how many cells we got? Three antipodal, two synergids, one egg, so total six and a large cell in between with two nucleus. So total seven cells and how many nucleus? Eight nucleus. Eight nucleus cell and seven cells. So we call them several celled, eight nucleate step of the embryo formation. This is a pre-embryonic state of a female reproductive system of flower. This is a perfect made situation just before the fertilization. So once they make this particular structure, now the fertilization can take place. Because remember the fertilization event, the fertilization event in plants are known as double fertilization in flowering plants. Double fertilization. Why? Because there are two fertilizations that take place instead of one. Because all these nucleus, there are n number of chromosomes. And uh, the pollen grain that will land also carry n number of chromosomes. So whenever they will be in contact, fertilization will happen. Now why double fertilization? Because the pollen grain will carry n number of chromosome. Now that pollen grain, remember I told you that this microsporangium ultimately they will produce two types of generative cell. If you Im imagine the last class, if you haven't seen, just go back and watch that class now. They form two types of generative cells and one vegetative cell. So two generative cells will produce two male gametes and both of these male gametes, the first male gamete will go and bind with the egg, fuse with the egg and making 2N, that is the primary zygote. And the other, the other generative cell and the nucleus from that generative cell will bind and fuse with the two nucleus and will form a 3N containing cell. So this two fertilization, one from egg N and from the generative cell number one, another N, will form 2N. This is the zygote, remember. On the other hand, generative cell 2, N number of chromosome binding to this 2N nucleuses in the polar cell. Fusion of all these three combined 3N and that will turn into endosperm structure, formation of endosperm structure in the plant and that endosperm will provide nutrients to the developing embryo because they are filled with all the nutrients because they are rich in nutrients because they, are the, they carry the maximum part of the cytosol for this flowering plant. That's what happens. Okay. So when we'll see the double fertilization event directly, I'll tell you how exactly the process take place and how exactly this fertilization take place with the help of animation which will make you understand the process better. Okay. So this in a sense of how the development of pistil take place and what is pistil by the way the total structure of female reproductive system of a flower including stigma style ovary altogether known as the pistil and the plants who have only female flowers and the female part of the flower is known as pistillate plants and the plants with only male part of the flower are known as staminate plants because they only have the stamen and microsporangium structure so this in a sense are the difference and contrast between the stamen development and pistil development and formation of egg and the formation of pollen grain. Now we need both for the for double fertilization event. So later we'll see how exactly the sperm and actually in this case the pollen grain brought in very contact with the stam stigma of the female flower that is known as pollination. The process with which uh, this, this male part of the flower in contact with the female part of the flower. So we'll see pollination and the types of pollinations in details. And we'll also see how plants prevent self-pollination and why self-pollination is bad, why cross-pollination is a better way to reproduce. So stay tuned and watch the series.